Hi, I'm Alex Dreve, better known as IB Crazy from Video Aerial Systems. And I've been traveling around a lot recently and thinking, man, I wish I had an FPV vehicle small enough that I could carry it with me anywhere. Well, now we do. This is the Trident 250 foldable tricopter. The Trident 250 carries a six inch propeller and a 2200 milliamp hour battery pack with a full FPV setup. It is a true 250 class tricopter and it is very capable of those high speed racing circuits we've seen become popular lately. The great thing is when you're done with it, fold it up and pack it inside a small shoebox. And anybody who's built a 250 class multi-copter can tell you it's like sticking 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bucket. Well, the Trident fits that stuff quite nice. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it and get this thing set up and ready for race day. We'll start this build with a swivel assembly. Using a heat gun, hair dryer, or even boiling water, heat the plastic up until it's warm to the touch. It should be uncomfortable to hold, but not hot enough to burn you. If the plastic seems extremely malleable like this and bends easily, let it cool down a little bit before proceeding on to snapping it together. With the parts warm to the touch, add a little bit of glue to either side of the tabs and then a little bit to the gap in the motor mount. Now you can add your swivel plates. The swivel plates should snap in by hand, but still require a fair amount of force. Be sure you're not warping or def deforming them by pressing them in place. They should snap. You will notice the holes in the motor mount are offset a bit. These holes should be closer to the swivel mount with only one hole in it. This will keep the prop from striking the frame if using six inch props with this vehicle, which is what I recommend. If you need to, you may use pliers to snap the assembly together. Keep in mind that the parts still need to be at least warm to the touch or they might snap. While the parts are still warm, use a pair of pliers to pull the tabs close together to lock the plate in good and tight. Next, we'll move on to the main plate. For this step, you will need the four one inch 440 nylon bolts and the four 632 by inch and a half stainless steel bolts. The nylon bolts get installed around the cross in the square pattern. The stainless steel bolts go on the outside edges. The stainless steel will mount the cover plate that protects the flight controller, while the nylon are what the flight controller will mount to. All of these bolts should be secured with nylon nuts. Tighten the hardware down with moderate tension. Don't tighten too much, so, such as you will damage the hardware, but be sure they won't come loose. The completed plate should look like this. Next, we'll assemble the rear arm with the parts shown here. Snap the pieces into the keyways as I'm showing here. The swivel mounts need to be mounted with the smooth side out. This will keep the tilt mechanism from binding up. These then go into the rear of the swing arm. Next, install your landing gear mount. Once that is installed, you can then install the two screw securing mounts before putting the top plate in place. These should be very tight. It might take a little doing before you're able to get this together. With the one inch stainless steel screw, secure the plate together through the holes in the rear. You only want this snugged up a little bit. If you tighten it too much, it'll pull the plates apart and make the next step practically impossible. Now we'll join up the arm with the main plate. These plates will be extremely tight and may take a lot of force to go into place. The plate with the bolts goes on top where the one with the single hole in the front goes on the bottom. Now we can install the front arms. 
Use the 1 inch 440 stainless steel bolts to secure the arm in place. The arm is mounted by the single hole nearest the edge. You may need to use a screwdriver to tighten the screw down through the swing arm as the holes are drilled very, very tight. Do not secure the arm with the locking nut just yet. We'll do that in a later step. Repeat this for the other side so both arms are loosely installed in the frame. Now we'll install the wire guides. You'll notice that one side of the wire guide is slightly longer than the other. The longer side goes towards the front of the aircraft. Once installed, now you can install the 440 stainless steel lock nuts to the bottom of the arm assembly. Now we can install the swing arm stop bolts. These go in the holes just in front of the swing arm pivot mount. Secure these bolts down with a 440 locking nut as well. These bolts should be tightened down so that the arm has significant friction such that it will not come out of shape while in flight. You will also need to tighten down the swing arm bolts one more time. Again, be sure there is significant friction on the arm. Now we'll install the rear motor and the swivel assembly onto the frame. I recommend using Loctite or Thread Locker to secure the motor, but if none is available, simply using proper tension should work fine. Be careful not to over tighten the bolts or the plate will crack. Also, be sure not to use countersunk screws as this will separate the plate and also crack it. With the motor installed, we will trim up our servo horn which will mount to the swivel plate. Take a pair of diagonals and trim off the bottom of the servo horn if necessary to make sure that it will not clear the bottom of the swivel plate. Install two wood screws part way into the servo horn. Then fit the servo horn up with the trim side facing down to the swivel plate. Then using a screwdriver Tighten the servo horn all the way into the swivel plate so it is good and secure and has no play in it. Once secure, cut the screw tips off the back side with a pair of diagonals or other strong cutting device flush with the swivel plate. Center your servo and then connect to the swivel plate. You want the servo to be case down so it will fit into the frame. Place the servo securing screw through the swivel plate and into the servo. Tighten this down good and secure with a small number zero or double zero screwdriver. Now we can install the assembly into using the inch and a half stainless steel bolt and stainless steel nut. Secure the swivel assembly to the frame with the stainless steel nut in the middle of the assembly. Tighten this bolt all the way down and then back out approximately one quarter turn. Check the swivel assembly to make sure there's not excessive play. Now we'll install the battery chamber. The battery chamber is installed with the parts shown here. There are five two inch long 632 bolts to install the chamber. The side guards only fit a certain way. If a guard doesn't fit in one side, flip it over or reverse the side and it should fit in just fine. Once the guards are installed, it's time to install the base plate. Insert it at a sharp angle as shown here. This will be difficult to get in as it's very stiff and a tight fit. Once installed, it should snap in the frame like this. Flip the frame over and place a two inch bolt down through the rear mount on the frame through all five hole slots locking in place. Once installed, Install one nylock nut to lock it down. The base plate is secured with the four other two inch long 632 stainless steel bolts. Install them through the bottom through both of the main plates. Secure these with the nylock nuts on the other side. Do not over tighten these nuts or you might damage or warp the frame. For those using a smaller speed control, it might be installed inside the rear arm assembly. However, for those using a larger speed control, such as this 20 amp that I'm installing, outside of the rear arm it seems to be the only logical place to install it. 
I'm using a little bit of glue as well as a zip tie to hold it in place and make sure it doesn't move around. I'll use the same technique for the front arm assembly. Again, a little bit of glue to hold it in place and then some zip ties wrapped around good and tight to keep it from moving. Installing the receiver and the FPV gear can get a little tricking on video, so I will just use some illustrated photos to show where everything goes. As you can see, I've stuck a UHF antenna out the front of the aircraft right beside the camera. This keeps it out of the way of the rotors. You'll also notice that I tucked the receiver down inside the frame between the two main plates. Since there doesn't seem to be a good place for a power distribution board, I simply brought all three of my ESC wires right to the battery plug. The battery plug accepted the three 16 gauge wires without any issue. On the other side of the frame, you can see how I mounted a video transmitter to the rear arm and installed a 3 amp UBEC inside the frame opposite the receiver. I'm using an extension cable off of my video transmitter as I intend to mount the antenna on top of the aircraft, but I don't want to damage my video transmitter in a crash. While there is some loss associated with using this extension cable, it comes to only about one half of one dB, and that is plenty acceptable, especially on a vehicle that's not going to exceed more than a mile and a half of distance. I highly recommend using a UBEC simply because the servo on a tricopter works extremely hard, much harder than it would on a fixed wing aircraft, and thus it will end up drawing a lot of amperage. Internal UBECs on the speed controls tend to overheat and burn up. This is obviously a bad situation, so if you can get away with using a UBEC, please do it. The top plate is installed with the following hardware. As you can see, I drilled a quarter inch hole in the back of my top plate to accommodate my video transmitter extension cable. You might find the riser plates do not give you adequate room for your wires. For this, you can simply cut out some of the reinforcing guards. It won't do a whole lot as the bolts take most of the tension. Just be careful not to split the plastic. I recommend heating this up with a heat gun to keep it malleable to make sure you don't damage the plastic when cutting with a pair of wire cutters. The top place is then placed over the runners and the four protruding bolts. I secure mine with simple nylon nuts as I tend to take this off frequently. It also helps that these nuts will rip off in a hard crash as this is where I intend to mount my HD camera and it's much better if the nylon nuts would fail rather than destroy my HD camera. This also gives me added protection for my antenna. You don't need to tighten this down very tight. In fact, finger tight is probably tight enough as excessive tension will cause this plate to warp. And that's it. You're done and ready to fly. These screenshots here are of my CC3D settings. These are what I'm using with 2206 motors with 64 APC props, and it seems to fly incredibly well. Feel free to use your own settings and motor selection. However, remember that a tricopter has one less motor than a quad, and thus I recommend using slightly larger motors for a tricopter than you would an equivalent mini quad.